So that was the first time that a WNBA game has ever been played in TD Garden. There's not a WNBA team in Boston. There is some energy as the WNBA looks to eventually expand more. Could Boston be one of those cities? And we'll see. But to see the Sun and the Sparks play in that arena where the last professional basketball we saw in there was the NBA Finals, and they sold it out. There were 19 thousand people there to watch the Sun and the Sparks play a game last night and the Sun get the win but for me it was just a reminder that the WNBA in its entirety is really cooking right now and it continues to grow and there is a lot of appropriate attention on Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever and we found out that the Fever Storm game from over the weekend drew 2.2 million viewers which is massive. The WNBA has 18 games this season where they've had more than a million viewers average and 16 of those 18 have featured Caitlin Clark. So you cannot deny the connectivity of Caitlin Clark playing basketball and people wanting to watch. If she's playing, they will come, they will watch the game. But there has been so much extended growth around the league where you are having a Connecticut Sun team that is one of the two teams in the WNBA to reach 20 wins thus far this season. Their win last night got them to 20 wins. The New York Liberty, who shored up a spot in the playoffs over the weekend, uh, the best team in the WNBA right now. But people want to watch this, and people are coming to watch it. And for 19,000 people to go to TD Garden when neither of those teams are from Boston is a pretty big deal. And I wish I could have watched it on TV. That's the next step. You could watch it on Twitter. It would have been really wonderful if I could just click on my remote, go over there, give it a look, and instead f saw it on social media. What were the other it was two very games? cool. I don't know. Okay. Because they typically. One of them, I think, was Aces Liberty. Where? Right. So it's Aces. Yeah. There's the Liberty are playing and the Aces are playing. But where are those games being played? Because typically the way it works is. There'll be a handful of games on a given day in the WNBA. Two of them will be on somewhere, be it Ion or ESPN or something like that, or Amazon Prime. And then one of them, it'll be a struggle to find. So I do wonder why that was a game that was the struggle to find when mm -hmm. you had all of this energy around those two teams playing in Boston. It's, it's a big week for the WNBA. Not just um, the, the Caitlin Clark piece of it on Sunday and the Liberty clinching. I think they clinched on Saturday or Sunday. But they're big games. I do believe Friday we get Liberty Aces, don't we? We get some pretty impressive games with really good teams with WNBA Finals hopes uh, coming up this weekend, which is always a good thing. And I look forward to seeing what those numbers look like yeah. as well. You can't – you can you can lean on Caitlin Clark – because Caitlin Clark is a bona fide phenomenon. She is a sports phenom. It, but to continue to grow this, you've got to have these other teams generating interest as well. Right. It can't just be Caitlin Clark is going to carry us from a viewership standpoint and nobody else is going to contribute anything. Like you said, 16 of the 18 had Caitlin Clark in the, the, the spotlight. You've got to find a way to make that more. Right, so if it's gonna if Caitlin Clark's gonna give you sixteen, everybody else got to give you ten, and you've got to be able to build that with the good teams because that's where the interest is. Right, the Sun are good. The Sun are also in a spot in the nation that loves women's basketball. Think about what Connecticut right. does with UConn women's basketball. So you got to find a way to make them pop. If you got the Liberty in New York, the New York City is one of those basketball meccas. They love them some basketball there. You got to find a way to get more interest in them as well. And then with Asia Wilson and what the Aces have been able to do these past two seasons, uh, not necessarily this third season but the past two seasons you would think there's a way to generate interest in having a successful sports franchise in vegas so you've mm -hmm. got to find that's and then go to la you got to make la work as well those are the four franchises outside of caitlin clark who's in a league of her own that the WNBA has got to find a way to make almost as marketable as Caitlin Clark. I don't think you can make anybody as marketable as Caitlin Clark, but you got to try and get close. No, she's in a different stratosphere right now. And, and that is a fact. Uh, she is drawing in a similar way to people who didn't like to watch golf, but like to watch Tiger Woods. So they go and watch golf. People who maybe don't like to watch the NBA, but they enjoy watching a Steph Curry or a LeBron. So they will seek out those kind of games. Like just one of those stars that transcends the sport and she's in a rookie season. And so that's 
notable, and there have been a ton of new fans to come into the league because of her, and that's excellent. But watching 19,000 people show up at that game last night is one of the reasons why every time somebody tries to tell me that nobody was watching the WNBA until Caitlin Clark, I have to push back regularly. I just got in this conversation again with somebody yesterday, and it truly drives me insane because it is just not true. And two, I guess two things can be true at once. The continued growth thanks to Caitlin Clark, but also the established promise of the WNBA and the established game and product and players that people do care about outside of the Indiana Fever. And granted, the Indiana Fever play tonight. Um, tonight they take on, no, I'm sorry, the Fever don't play tonight. They play, when do they have a next play? Saturday. 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 And they remember, play the Lynx. Because remember, all of their games were front-loaded front loaded. on national TV right. to capitalize on Caitlin Clark. Now they've got a bit more, they got significantly more time off between games than everybody else in the W. But it will be a great game because they play the Lynx, who are one of the better teams in the I, WNBA. I Your the top team, team right now. Well, you said that... Who did you think the Liberty played on Friday? It is. Or the Ace. I, it's Aces Lynx. Yes. Which is so a great game on that Friday. Is, night. That is a game on a Friday night. Yes. There's not much else happening in the sports sphere. As a WNBA, you've got to be able to pitch us that game. You've got to be able to sell us that game. You've got the, the old guard, the team looking to three peat versus arguably the best team in the WNBA. You've got Asia Wilson versus Collier, right? You've got a battle for the MVP race right yes. there. I think maybe a battle for a defensive player of the year also, but digress and regress. Like, you've got legitimate storylines featuring good yes. teams and great players. You've got to sell us that. That has got to be one of those games that yes. draws all of the eyeballs. Not, not saying like a Caitlin Clark, because you're right. That is the Tiger Woods of the moment right now where everybody is tuning in to watch. That game right there, if you're going to continue to grow as a league, that game has to do numbers. That game last night needed to be on national TV. Yeah. It's a history game. Dijanae Carrington spoke passionately about it. You should not have to pay or seek out watching a historical moment in the sport of basketball where these teams are playing at TD Garden for the first time and all of the history there and put in the fact that the Connecticut Sun are a really good team, a team so good that they consider themselves to have six starters and they bumped Dewana Bonner to the bench for the first time maybe in her career coming off they the bench Bonner last night. The they bench. had Bonner come off the bench huh. because they rolled with uh, the starting lineup of Alyssa Thomas, Dejanay Carrington, Brianna Jones, Maureen Mabry, and uh, Harris was okay. their starting five last night with Dewana coming off the bench. But they're a really good team, and so if you put that on TV in a cool environment when there isn't a ton of things going on in the sports world, like, that's how you capitalize on marketing. And like you said, coming up this weekend, Big sure, weekend. It's, it's, it, get excited it's for Fever three, Links, but how about Sun four. Liberty before that? It's three or four games this weekend yeah. where I it know. is. If you're the W, you've got to go. I would think if it was me, I'd look at this slate of games this weekend and be like, yo, we are bombarding as many people as we can with how important and how much fun these games are and how much fun and how you'll – find that sports passion in your belly that gets the gets the bubbling up when you mm -hmm. watch some of these sports teams go out there and compete like you'll get that feeling here on friday these are all on ion um the you brought it up aces links on ion right then on saturday you got sun versus liberty like, come on man you got to yeah. get us up for that then of course you got fever and links nobody's gonna have an issue getting up with, for that but then on sunday you go aces storm Right, like those yeah. are the top teams in the W minus the Fever. Did those you see are the, the top storm? teams. Sorry, not to interrupt. Did Go you ahead. see the storm sign, Gabby Williams? Really? Mm hmm. Oh. I know. Okay. I was happy to see her get a return to the WNBA. Yeah. The Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt, live every weekday at 8 a.m.